Trump's Era The election of Donald Trump as the President of the United States took the world by surprise. The presidential win of Donald Trump will remain as one of the most dominant features of the economy of the world that happened in 2016 and will continue to embark itself in the global market for next series of years. Until now, the stocks of the United States are soaring and setting records. The other global markets and economies are taking their lows in the economy to the rallies as the global investors have been selling bonds and buying stocks in their belief that the pro-business administration of Donald Trump will help them in tax cuts, stimulate the fiscal policy and the deregulation to inflame the inflation and economic growth in the largest economy of the world. Such headwinds are expected to continue in 2017, at least not the ones which are highly elevated by means of political expectations which imply that this is the biggest risk in the world about facing stocks. However, this would also yield higher returns that will inhibit multiple expansion of the economy and the strengthening of the US dollar which would lay the importance on corporate earnings or guidance. With the presidential election of Donald Trump, the world can expect more stock availability in the global market on an assumption that the president continues to use his Twitter account. Depending on the structuring of the new infrastructure in the United States and the infrastructure of the investments and considering the fact that spending could serve as a boon to the global growth and development, one can consider buying items at lowered interest rates. However, these decisions will be made on the economics as well as the political fundamentals. The struggle for power between the White House and the Republican leaders on Capitol Hill will be the guide to the flow of economy as it will form the determining force whether the traditional visions of the Republican leaders for tax cuts and small government will win over the populist impulses of Donald Trump. China Gradual Decline it is the final year of the first term of President Xi Jinping in 2017. He has been facing several challenges in the main tenants of the second largest economy in the world. The government of China is aiming for higher growth rates in 2017 of 6.5% for the next five years, but recent experiences of China have revealed that on reaching or exceeding the desired goals would not be enough to achieve the stability of the economy of China unless these aims are achieved in a sustainable manner. Since the financial crisis has happened, the policymakers in China have expanded the growth by giving relevant support to the corporate sector of the country with cheaper credit to enhance investment in the infrastructure and the export sector of China. However, the credit has been continuously leading into poor productive investments which have led to the overall increase in the debt. As per a recent survey conducted by International Monetary Fund, the overall growth of credit has been around 20% every year that is significantly higher than the nominal growth of the GDP. This cannot be considered as a sustainable strategy or planning to achieve future growth and development in the Chinese economy. President Xi Jinping will have to strive in a more dedicated manner to achieve the balance in the economy of China by increasing the consumer spending in the upcoming year. This will be possible if the economy of China will continue to enhance and stimulate the global growth for going forward and achieving the desired results. The Era of Janet Yellen As 2016 was the era of Donald Trump, so was it for Janet Yellen. One of the governmental institutions that are not under the control of the Republican Party is the Federal Reserve. The independent central bank will be given the task to manage the supply of money in response to the new fiscal policies. As a result of the prediction of an increase in the interest rates, Fed Janet Yellen might be forced to advance in a faster manner in the respect that if the fiscal spending that is generous enough will heat up the labour market, then it might also lead to inflation in a significant manner that is 2% above the annual target of the bank. Trade will be at the foreground. The most stable policy on the global front that has happened over the past 70 years has been the steady and the ongoing march towards the free trade. But the concern of removing the barriers to trade has been picked after a long time. 
The year 2016 on the front of the global economy has revealed that the leaders in the affluent world are no longer going to streamline the policies that tend to deplete the potential growth of the economy in return for cheaper products and greater pay for selected items. During the year 2017, all the eyes are going to be on the presidential-elect Donald Trump as he will be setting the tone of the parameters of global trade and economy. Several concerns, like whether he will be moving out of NAFTA or if he will be setting his sights on improving the trade with China or if he will afoul the World Trade Organization rules. Trump will have to play a significant role in his willingness to negotiate trade relations with Britain. Global Growth Positive Outlook Global growth in terms of economy is estimated to advance with real growth of GDP of around 2.5% in the year 2016 and around 2.8% in the year 2017. The analysts and the experts are expecting an advanced growth in the economy with stable figures at around 1.6% in 2016 and around 1.8% in the year 2017 and EM, emerging market, to pick up by 3.7% in 2016 and around 4.3% in 2017. This is due to the fading away of the major emerging markets, EMs. The message is quite clear for the global investors when considered on the parameter of overweighing EM equities that will advance in 2017. EU will continue to suffer. After the tough state of the global economy in 2016, the EU will continue to face several challenges in terms of real and perceived financial and political growth. Despite the data that has been collected on a domestic basis, particularly those which track the consumer spending, there is still no hope of any recovery. There is still no hope of any recovery as the industry and trade-related signpoints have shown a considerable decline. Economists have predicted just around 0.3% growth in Q2Q GDP in Q3. These considerations are completely against the background of the current aggressive QE, with the intention of the ECB to purchase around billions of assets each month until the end of March 2017 or even beyond. Brexit will continue to remain a concern for the EU. However, the direct impact on the economy might be far less than what is expected due to the prolonged nature of the split. Elections in Germany and France will have to face the renewal of the anti-immigration right wing of the isolationist. Brexit will occupy the centre stage. With the continuing trend of the global economy in 2016, Brexit will continue to have a determining impact in the United Kingdom along with its market and economy. The pound has come down over 16% since the time of the decision to leave the EU. However, there are few substantial signs of economic problems in Britain. The employment is stable, the government bonds are up and the stock market has held up high in terms of local currency. The largest companies of United Kingdom like GlaxoSmithKline, PLC, British American Tobacco, PLC, AstraZeneca, PLC and Diageo have their income coming from abroad. The shares of this company have gone high because of the decrease in the value of the pound. However, in the long term, it could be possible that economic restlessness in Britain could hit the largest free trade bloc of the world when Brexit would actually occur. Several economists and analysts are in doubt whether the pound can ever impact the trade by withdrawing from the EU. Monetary Policy Intonation Point in the advanced economies of the developed countries, the monetary policy might be at an inflection point. Since the year 2008, purchases of large-scale assets have served as the instruments of choice for several central banks for the implementation of the monetary policy. These monetary policies are also referred to as the quantitative easing QE which refers to the predetermined quantities of the purchase of the assets and the increased monetary base have failed to promote any growth or inflation. In response to this factor, the central banks might pursue various approaches including increased negative rate policies, yield targeting and modifications to the targets of the central bank. 
as many economists and analysts consider is that proper expansion of the fiscal policies is required. The housing market in China might head to economic bubble. In 2017, the investors would also need to consider the booming property market of China. The house buying frenzy in China is spurred on by easy credit through major cities in China and is gradually spreading to the small cities as well. There are fears of investment bubble that is fueled by debts as the household debts are soaring to high unprecedented levels. Beijing is quite cautious of the halting of the housing market in an abrupt manner that is fueled by the credits of the sale of homes have flowed to the slow-moving economy as various other engines of growth like business investment and manufacturing remains inactive. Sectors related to a property like building and construction materials account for as much as 25% of the GDP of China. Because of these uncertainties in the economy and with respect to investment bubble, the equities of China have not been involving in the recent rally for global equity and thus have remained low on the YTD. The economy of Japan hopes for growth. The equity markets of Japan have gained momentum and have railed in a strong manner for the last three months with a Nikkei to 225 upwards by around 11%. However, it is quite low by the same amount at the time a year about the same date. A lack of growth in the economy of Japan with the GDP of Japan expected to grow only by 0.5% in 2016 and 0.6% in the year 2017, the inability of the Japan Bank and the recent deflationary pressures have all resulted in the rise of yen have put pressure on the global market from the starting of the year. The recent rally that was based on the market was evaporated by the BOJ during the last month by switching its policy from target to interest rates including the money printing after several years of purchase of assets on a massive scale have failed to give a jolt to the economy to put it out of stagnation. Under the new version of Yield Curve Control Framework of the Economy, the BOJ pledged to maintain the 10-year bond yield amounting to 0%. Whether these circumstances would lead to stagnant economy and higher inflation, the only considerable amount of time can tell. As most of the observers argue that the requirement in the current scenario is the forceful application of the legs of the Premier Shinzo's stimulus policies, which would lead to structural reforms and flexible fiscal policy such that it would be possible to achieve balanced and sustainable economic growth. Increase in protectionism This is potentially negative but relatively new trend in the political environment of the nativists that is referred to as protectionism, which refers to the revising of the integration of the global trade for over half a century. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, had predicted the development of a dangerous cycle resulting in the weak growth that could be endangered by protectionism that could inflame a strong backlash against the form of trade that could lead to the depression of the final output in the long run. As for the calculations of the IMF, there has been observed a sharp rise in the tariffs along with the other barriers to trade which could result in the increased prices for import on a global level by around 10%. This amount would result in around 15% decrease in the overall exports for the next five years. Even the consumption would fall by around 2% and the economic growth on a global scale would experience around 2% decrement in the coming times. Rising interest rates of the United States It is highly likely that the interest rates might go up which would start this year, but it would be quite long before these would affect the equity prices of the United States. Businesses face tough situations in the face of growth challenges. As the new year 2017 has started, many types of research and market analysts have often been asked the question the significant issue that the businesses around the world have been facing since the advent of the year 2016. There can be several economic, social and political factors that can be stated in support of the issue. With so many factors, the majority of them have resulted in affecting opportunities and risks to the businesses of the world. The United States has recently increased the interest rates for the global economy.
The oil prices in 2015 ended at around 37 US dollars a barrel, which are comparatively lower to the increased price of each barrel at 56 US dollars during the year 2016. The price of oil has been found to be comparatively low with the rising of the sanctions in the provinces of Iran. The rebalancing of the economy of China presents several opportunities, but there has been a lower demand for the raw materials and commodities that will have a significant impact on the economies that are based on export business in 2016. However, even after all these considerations, the businesses will remain resilient in the face of the determining factors as global optimism has held firm plans to make investments to continue the future economic growth. Despite the challenges faced by the EU, around 38% of the businesses operating in the EU that have been surveyed in the quarterly global survey have found to be optimistic about the respect economy of the nation in 2016, which is exactly the same as in Q1 and Q3 of last year. The results of the survey have revealed that there exists a significant amount of confidence across the businesses of the continents as they are trying to evade the possible threats of deflation, terrorism and possible exits of Britain and Greece. In addition to these, an increment in the expected investment of the R&D department over the previous quarters has demonstrated that the businesses of the EU are looking optimistic after the recent volatility in the stock market. In the United States as well, the confidence of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. economy has resulted in the hike in the interest rate for the first time in nearly a decade in December, and there are possibilities of more hikes coming up in the advancing years. However, as per the research of the analysts and experts, it has been found that the businesses of the United States and their optimism have fallen by around 24 percent points after heading into the year 2016, which is recorded as the biggest fall in any one of the 36 countries that have been surveyed. The data presented by the International Business Report have shown a drop in the export of the United States, which has expected the year 2016 as the culprit. This is fueled by the strengthening of the value of the dollar and by the shifting of the stance of Fed on the rates of interests. The approaching changes or modifications in leadership cam also create some uncertainty with the election of the new president in 2016. The businesses around the world have been suffering a dent in confidence since the year 2015, which follows several kinds of uncertainty with respect to speed and the extent of the showdown of China. This situation has somewhat subsided. There has been widespread optimism across the region of Asia-Pacific that has increased to as much as 31% in Q4, which is compared to the 27% that was recovered in 2016. However, during the month of January, the world has witnessed sharp falls and decline in the stock market of China, as far as the concern about the speed of the slowdown in the economy is concerned. These are a reminder of the fact that the rebalancing of the economy of China, especially in context to the depressing demand of the raw materials in comparison to the recent years, has been creating substantial challenges. However, the dynamic businesses of the world will spot several new opportunities as there is an increased demand for the offerings that are led by services in China that expand along with the booming middle class. Economic Growth The IMF has lowered the global growth in the year 2016, which was forecasted to around 3.6% from the previous 3.8% in July 2015. The IMF has also made revisions of the trade growth projection of the world for the year 2016 from 4.4% in July 2015 to 4.1%. When looked upon the year 2016, it has been observed that the Federal Reserve of the United States has given signals for imparting confidence in the economic recovery in the country with the rise in the rate of interest for the first time in 114 months. The move has initially welcomed the warmth of the global markets and was accompanied by the strengths of the US dollar that has become a serious concern for the exporters of the country. The rise in the interest rate will not be welcomed by the emerging markets of the world that hold substantial quantities of the debt that is dominated by the US dollar. 
the rebalancing of the economy of China to become more service-oriented continues to shape the outlook of the global economy. The PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, manufacturing for China stood at around 49.7 in December 2015. This happened after the contraction which continued for a fifth consecutive month. However, the value of PMI of the non-manufacturing sector rose to 54.4 from the previous record of 53.6 in November. The economic growth of China is expected to be around 6.3% this year, which would be 0.5% slower than the last year. However, the impact of the modifications that have been taking place in the second largest economy of the world are having a limited impact or effect on the predictions of the regions of Asia at around 5.4% and for ASEAN minus 5 at around 4.9%. The forecast for the growth of the economy for the Eurozone area has been expected to be around 1.6% that remains almost unchanged from the last year. The economic growth forecasts for other areas of the world, including Germany, is at 1.6%, France at 1.5% and Italy at 1.3%, all of which are expected to rise this year than the last. In other parts of the world, the economy of Greece is expected to slow to around minus 1.3%, which in comparison to the previous records was predicted to be around minus 2.3% in 2015. The consumer prices across the Eurozone are forecasted to rise by 1% in this year, which is still falling short of the previous 2% of the inflation target of the region. This is despite the fact that the low base rates as per the records and the expansive of the QE programme of the Central Bank of Europe have continued to grow. In other regions, including South America, the depreciating currency and the declining prices of the commodities are forecasted to have a major impact on the inflation and output, with the consumer prices to observe an increase by 15% this year. Argentina, which stands at the value of minus 0.7%, is forecasted to experience a contraction in spite of a boost in the business confidence, which has been followed by the beginning of the presidency of Maurizio Macri. When it comes to Brazil, the recession in the economic growth is expected to continue at minus 1%, as the largest economy of the region is struggling with the declining value of the real, which is down by 30% in comparison to the value of the US dollar in December year 2015. Moreover, high level of unemployment is also forecasted to have risen to around 8.6% in 2016 in comparison with 6.6% as per the records of the last year. The effects of the instability that had occurred in MENA, the regions of Pakistan and Afghanistan, is expected to have limited effect on the economic growth, which is predicted to be around 3.9% in 2016 in comparison of the records of 2.5% of last year. Having recorded so, the economic growth in these regions are expected to witness a decline in the majority of the oil-producing nations, including Saudi Arabia, which is down by 2.2% from the 3.4% as compared to one-year records. The current rate of account deficit is expected to rise to as much as 4.7% of GDP. In the regions of SSA, Sub-Saharan Africa, the significant oil exporters have been observed to be in less suffering and are expected to grow by as much as 4.1% this year in comparison to the records of the previous year at 3.5%. The presentation of the SSA region in the context of the economic growth is considered to be quite strong at around 4.3%. However, the growth percentage is expected to decline in some of the low-income and underdeveloped countries like Ethiopia that is down to 8.1% in comparison to 8.7% during the last year as well as in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is down to 7.3% from the previous record of 8.4%. As far as the economic growth of the regions of the Commonwealth of Independent States is concerned, it is expected to return by 0.5% after following a decline in the overall output in the previous year. 
the economy of Russia is set to fall by as much as minus 0.6% as it continues to struggle with the declining trade embargoes and the falling commodity prices in the provinces. Business Growth Looking back into the year 2016, the reports of the IBR, International Business Report, has observed net global business optimism, which is recorded at 36%, with around 1 pp rise since last year. The businesses of the EU, which have been recorded at around 38%, are considered to be the significant factors leading to the economic stability of the world. Despite all the concerns about the crisis of the migrants, potential Brexit and terrorism, the businesses across the region have maintained significant levels of confidence since last year. At the same time in the United States, the rise in the rate of interest during the month of December has increased the concerns among the leaders of businesses in the world that have reported a pivotal quarterly drop of around 24 pp in context to the economic context. As far as the economic growth of the world is concerned, the businesses in the developed nations are feeling highly confident about the economic prospects of the countries like the United Kingdom at 73%, Ireland at 88%, Netherlands at 68%, the United States at 50%, Australia at 46% and Spain at 49%. All have reported high levels of optimism. On the other hand, the economies of the commodity-intense countries like Brazil at minus 12%, South Africa at minus 24% and Malaysia at minus 14% have been greatly affected by the decline in the selling prices for exporting the commodities. In North America, the steep quarterly fall in the business optimism in the United States at the end of the year to 50% has increased the concerns among the exporters about the strength of the US dollar, which has been compounded by the rise in the rate of interest by the Federal Reserve. The leading businesses in Canada have also recorded a significant fall in the confidence and are looking ahead to 2017 in comparison to the last year, which was at 18% down by 35 pp to be driven by the concerns about the declining price of the commodities. Across the region of the Asia-Pacific, the entire outlook for growth in businesses has made the considerations on the positive front by keeping in mind the slowdown of the economy of China, which has resulted in the volatility of the market across the entire nation. The confidence in the business optimism within the region has been looking ahead to the recent year to be up by 4 pp, up to 31%, as compared to the last year. Some of the major economies of the region, like Australia at 46%, Indonesia at 56% and China at 36%, have reported significant uplifts on the quarterly term in context to business optimism. However, in Japan, which has been recorded at minus 11%, the Prime Minister Abe has maintained three factors of monetary easing, fiscal stimulus and structural reforms which are yet to be translated into the growth of the business confidence across the country. Sales and Profits the revenue expectation of the global market at 44% for the last year is slightly up in comparison to the records of the last year. As the outlook for the global economic growth is looking promising, the business optimism is not shared on an even platform. The leading companies in India at 92%, Nigeria at 86%, Mexico at 74%, Ireland at 74%, Turkey at 72% and Argentina at 72% have expressed greater confidence about the increase in revenues in comparison to the last year. Mexico is getting benefited from the less commodity-intense economy in comparison to the peers of Latin America. On the other hand, the businesses in Argentina have welcomed the presidency of Mauricio Macri and the business firms in Turkey are appearing to be unconcerned about the effects of the neighboring instability and migrant crisis. The countries that have been reporting lower revenue expectations like France at 11%, China at 21% and Russia at 8% are facing poor prospects in terms of exports and limited domestic demand. Across the emerging markets of the globe, the revenue expectations for the year 2016 had been already divided. 
the balance of the mint countries is expected to increase a rise at 74%, up by 17 BP in comparison to the last year records. Exports Looking back into the year 2016, the business enterprises across the world have reported low expectations in terms of exports. Around 15% of the companies across the globe is looking to expand their business with an increase in exports in the coming year. The rise in the interest rate of the Federal Reserve has also resulted in the strengthening of the US dollar and has hurt the export sentiments in the United States wherein around 11% of the companies are expecting to expand the exports in the upcoming year. The issue of the decline in the exports is likely to be compounded by the declining values of the currencies across the major export markets of the United States, including Japan, Mexico and Brazil. The EU, at 26%, has maintained a high level of the expectations of an increase in exports throughout 2016. The balance of the firms that have been expecting to witness an increase in the exports over the upcoming year in the United Kingdom at 23% have observed significant uplift by 11 pp at the end of the year, despite the fact that the prospectus of the membership is dependent on the primary market of export, that is, the EU. Innovation and Investment with the worldwide expectation of the increase in the overall infrastructure with respect to innovation and R&D investment, these factors might have fallen by the end of this year with the sentiment of the market emerging on grounds of the expected forecasts. Looking back into 2016, the business expectation on the global front for the increase in investment has declined from the last year across the fields of research and development, innovation and investment. The R&D field has reflected the decline of about 22% down by 8 pp. Emerging nations and regions have also weighed down on the R&D, research and development expectations, or the emerging economies have reported a decline in the investment plans. The investment sector, including R&D and innovation, has increased in the EU but has declined sharply on the fronts of North America. The overall outlook with respect to the innovation and investment, along with research and development R&D, has been better in Africa and MIND countries.